To say that the Celtics offense has struggled against the Miami Heat's zone defense would probably be an understatement. In Game 2, the Heat held the Celtics to .66 points per possession, an abysmal number for even the worst offenses. This is not an anomaly or a new thing for the Celtics. According to Synergy's data, data that is not always perfect, the Celtics ranked 27th in zone offense with a paltry .88 points per possession throughout the season. In the playoffs, by my tracking, the Celtics are at .79 points per possession overall, which is the same for the Miami Heat series so far. Now in Game 2, the Heat played 30 zone possessions on defense, compared to 12 in Game 1. I've already broken down the Miami Heat zone defense in depth. I have linked that video below so I will not be diving too deep into why the Heat's 2-3 zone defense is so good. You can check out that video below. You can also follow me on Twitter at HalfCourtHoops. If you enjoy this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. The Heat's 2-3 zone is set up with two players up top that are typically the better athletes, Crowder, Butler, Jones Jr. Though generally speaking, they'll keep their better athletes with length up top. What this does is eliminate any sort of ball screen action, which the Celtics love to run all the time for Kemba and Tatum. They hurt them a lot with that in game one. They've hurt almost every single team with it. They keep their wings a little bit higher. In this case, it's Dragic and Hero. They're, de they're designed to basically stunt at a wing pass, get bumped down, and then take the corner. Uh, they'll also be responsible for like weak side rebounding and different things like that. And last but not least, maybe the most important part, it keeps Bam Adebayo, or the Heat's big, in rim protection. So that generally speaking, they'll keep him going block to block, keeping him low, allowing him to protect the rim and rebound. Now the reason this is successful against the Celtics offense, and the reason that they'll probably go into it more often, is because the Celtics offense has basically run through Tatum and Kemba. Now, the two ways it's run through them is by using either spread ball screen or a double ball screen for Tatum or Kemba to allow them to operate and try to attack downhill, or it would get them in a 1-4 in a or you know a, a Kemba and Tatum ball screen and go switch hunting and try and find a mismatch to take advantage of it. Well, this doesn't allow them to find the mismatch because it keeps Dragic and Hero and Robinson on the wings and doesn't allow them to get pulled into ball screen actions, get caught in switches and puts the defense in rotation. So it kind of protects their weakest spots while at the same time forcing the Celtics into really bad offensive possessions because they're not a great zone offense team. Let's go back to some game one film. In game one, the Celtics scored 1.08 points per possession against the Heat zone in 12 defensive possessions. The biggest difference in these possessions was their ability to get the ball into the paint, get the defense moving, and create easier scoring opportunities. They didn't run a lot of sets, but when they did, they attacked the gaps of the zone, getting two on the ball, keeping the advantage they created, getting the ball into the lane, high post, and attacking the weaknesses of the zone. This theme continued in game two with the first few possessions of Kemba getting downhill and finding Smart for a layup. Next, they hit Tice in the high post. Kemba faked a pass, got a clean look from pull up. They grabbed the offensive rebound, ended up finding Brown for a pull up jumper that he knocks down. In the second quarter, they only faced two possessions of zone defense. They scored on both of those, including the offensive rebound here with Brown scoring it. The third and fourth quarters where they really started to struggle. In the first possession, they played zone in the third quarter. They went to their overload ball screen action, uh, where you can see Kemba receive a pass here, and then Tice is going to set a ball screen on the inside of the zone. This typically creates an advantage and has a, a gap to attack, but the Heat do a good job of closing these gaps. Celtics do a job, good job staying patient here. Kemba attacks. He has Brown, but ends up just throwing it through his legs. Not a great play at all, just an unforced error. This next action, I really want to go back and show as Tatum comes up here from the zipper action. We're going to see the top two players of the heat zone both go with them, leaving the high post wide open. That's something I like to take a note of as, you know, future after timeouts or, you know, counters that the Celtics will go to. Now the Celtics here are running their pet play for Kemba, a little triple screen. Smart goes up and sets a ball screen. Tatum hits Smart. Smart drives baseline. This is just kind of bad defense here from the heat, allowing him to drive baseline and then fouling him. The next possession, the Celtics go to their split action here, and if running against man, you would split this, but running against zone, Tatum should sit and hold in the high post. He ends up clearing for no reason. The Celtics create a natural overload with Brown and Smart on the same side. Brown does a good job attacking the gap, finds Tice, who ends up missing the layup. Game one, the Heat did not press into a zone at all. 
this time they actually utilize this in the third quarter going to a 2-2-1 back to a 2-3 what this does is slow the offense down and the Celtics are already overthinking it so now you get the initial action started at with about 15 on the shot clock so almost cutting the clock in half you know chewing up 10 seconds at a time so when the Celtics go to their initial action they're rushed smart drives baseline Crowder does a good job digging in and forces the turnover Next possession, we go back to that overload action. So they send players through and send players through into a ball screen. And one of the things the zone does, it forces the Celtics to make higher passes. And by making higher passes or off target passes, it allows the zone to reset itself. Now late in the shot clock here, Tatum does a good job of driving inside, ends up missing a floater, but that's a shot that the zone's willing to live with. Again, we see off a miss, we see that little 2-2-1 two, two, slowing down the offense, going into a high ball screen. What I love here is how Hero stunts at Kemba, so he'll stunt and make Kemba think, and now the zone is reset and set back up again, so that's a big part of their zone. The corners are going to stunt. Kemba drives, doesn't really have any advantage here, ends up kicking to Jalen Brown. Now, Jalen Brown drives baseline as Cantor's posting up, so not great spacing. He finds Tatum, who drives, ends up getting inside, draws a foul. Not great discipline by Bam there. Now, baseline of bounds, they run this little special. They go a line at the top. Tice screens off Crowder. Tatum misses, in my opinion, a pretty good look from three. Next, we have the length and versatility of the zone. So you can see Jones Jr. getting his hands up. That's been a huge factor for the Heat zone against the Celtics, the top two players being aggressive. He ends up making a bad foul there. And after timeout, they did go the 2-2-1, but they just didn't show it. This is a little special that the Celtics are running against the zone. Tatum comes out as they screen the top. This pulls the wing out, attacks smart on the baseline. Tatum drives, ends up hitting a pro pass. Nothing there, kick to Brown, and in my opinion, a good look from three. So a pretty solid after timeout there. So the Celtics figured out some stuff, but weren't really doing a great job overall against the zone. Coming back down after the challenge, we're going to see the little overload action, and then we get a step-up ball screen, what I call Nick's action, and what a weakness of the zone is, is baseline drive. So if the corner man gets pulled up too high, the baseline drive is open, Jalen Brown gets fouled. Here's a little zone special that most teams in college run, this little double flare action for Tatum. In my opinion, he should just be catching and shooting this. The heat zone's pretty good at recovering. Crowder does a good job of staying there. Um, you know, nothing comes of that initial action. Smart ends up driving inside. Look at the length of Jones Jr. here, able to get, get the contest and the block on the shot after the blow by. Here's that similar triple screen action that we saw the high post was open on. Jalen Brown is the outside screener. He's going to slip inside, catch the ball in the high post. I love him operating there. They should look to get him more of that ball in game three. Olenek reaches in for a bad foul. Here is what the Heat want. They want Smart to take this bad three. They'll allow him to do that all day. Kemba, late clock here, actually hits a pretty ridiculously tough shot. I think Jones Jr. is a great job defending that. Sometimes players make shots. Now, this is where I love Smart getting in the high post. They need to do more of this in game three. Look at the length here as Kemba drives. A little deflection from Jones Jr., a little scramble. Now, Celtics should have the advantage here, and Tatum ends up throwing the ball out of bounds. Same sort of uh, triple screen action here for Kemba. This time we're going to get a flash from Marcus Smart inside. I think he needs to just catch and shoot this or catch and attack. Uh, don't be so passive. He looks, he pump fakes, and then ends up doing nothing with it. Uh, Tatum drives, and look how weird the Celtic spacing is here. Those three players, like you're just bailing out the defense and not have to guard anybody, so Tatum has to have nowhere to go for it. Now I think Kemba does a good job attacking this closeout and gets a pretty clean look from you know mid-range floater game that he probably should knock down. Another ball screen action for Kemba here where he gets a pretty clean look in my opinion and by creating that ball screen that creates the corner help that allows Jalen Brown to get the offensive rebound. Now here's the top of the zone deflection, uh, that length coming into play, Butler with great hustle and watch Tatum and Tice here, they both stop and go. Robinson pulls out Kemba, that allows Butler to get the easy dunk putting the heat back within one. Smart catches it at the high post again, does a good job kicking it out, playing out of the high post, getting the ball reversed. Jalen Brown does a good job attacking, drives in, gets fouled. Good possession there. Uh, same thing here. They try to do a little bit, you know, with, with attacking. Nothing really comes of it. They're allowing the heat zone to kind of settle and relax. Nobody's flashing the high post. You know, nobody's doing anything, and Smart takes this ill-advised bad shot. I don't know what that was. 
In this example, we're gonna look at a side ball screen from Tice, Tatum drives. Now, I think this is a pretty good look for Kemba as Crowder's kind of loaded up on Tatum. Kemba fills behind, and I, I mean, I would take that shot if I'm the Celtics. He ends up just missing it. The Celtics run a little ball screen. Now, Kemba fakes that sideline pass, gets Crowder to bite on it, but nothing really comes of it. They do a good job of corralling him, and then Smart takes another ill-advised shot that kind of bails the defense out. Based on out of bounds, and I want to play this through, and, I'm, and it's, they're in 2-3 based on out of bounds, and what I want to show is, okay, what happened versus what should have happened, right? So people are going to look at this after timeout and go, wow, Brad Stevens, what are you doing? This is terrible, right? Butler steals. He ends up going for easy two-on-one, putting the heat up seven with a minute and a half left. You can see Stevens' hands up. What are you guys doing? Okay. The play is normally going to start off like an after timeout that they've run actually previously against man. Brown's going to cut inside. Tatum's going to curl, and Tice is going to screen Butler. So Tice is screening Butler here. The key here is if Marcus Smart is patient enough, he would have had Tice open for a wide open layup. The count was only at three by right about now, and Tice would have been wide open. Bam would have had to choose between guarding Tatum or guarding Tice, a two on one. Tice would have been open for a nice little push shot. That was the design of the play. Marcus Smart made a bad read, and that's just what happened in, in being a turnover. Now, the numbers are skewed a little bit here because the Celtics are kind of late game pressing mode where they're kind of attacking more. And actually, by attacking more, they got Jalen Brown two pretty clean looks from three that he knocked down. And then on the last play, they ran a, like a little spread ball screen, a pick and pop with Tice. They got the ball reversed, and Brown ended up missing a wide open corner three. So he just knocked down two in a row. He just missed this, probably forcing the Heat to go for the last shot or maybe even overtime. Overall, the Celtics definitely need some work with their zone offense, but there's some good things there. The decision making, the patience, you know, the thought process behind everything, in my opinion, is correct. I don't think they need to do anything drastic. They just need to be able to make better decisions and have better execution when it comes down to it. Thank you so much for watching this breakdown. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to like and subscribe. I look forward to doing more.